BBC News Magazine. The National Television News Feature Show. The top news of the week and television film features on the world around us. These are the sights and sounds of our time. The skyline of Toronto this week looked much the same as it has for many weeks past. And perhaps the people who live and work in its thousands of buildings look much the same, too, on the surface. But the city was much different, and so were the people. Not on the surface, underground. Toronto got itself a subway, and this is the story of how it happened. In the beginning, much further back than officials care to remember now, about 12 years ago, there were nothing but plans and ideas. Eventually, almost much to the surprise of skeptical Torontonians, the plan gave way to models. Toronto was going to get a subway, really. Four and a half years ago, they went underground. Construction began. Workers burrowed and machines chewed away at the earth. The workers went underground, and Toronto forgot about it. The subway, what's that? But meanwhile, 15 million man hours were being added up. 10,000 tons of structural steel were being welded together. And a million and a half bags of cement were being given form. Toronto was getting a subway. Really. Above ground, Toronto was reminded of it. Its main street, Young Street, was ripped up and transformed into a giant boardwalk. Sidewalk superintendents became so much a part of the subway project, the Toronto Transportation Commission issued special manuals so they could uh, <coughs> help with the work. Some took it all quietly. They were just awed by the immenseness of it all. Some felt they had a duty to perform. This was going to be their subway, and they were going to build it. From the sidelines, anyway. The subway wasn't a complete subway at all, they found. Why, some of it was to run above ground, and a row of houses was requisitioned and ripped up accordingly. Probably the only ones, really with faith that it would ever come true, were the workmen. They were constructing it, they obviously had inside information. So you see, when the sign went up that it was a reality this week, it's no wonder all gathered round for the opening. Premier Frost of Ontario was there to invite Mayor Lamport to join him in throwing the all-important switch. Now place your hand on the control handle. And ladies and gentlemen, as we press it forward, to give Canada first subway the green light. And so, $59 million later, a few more than had been bargained on 12 years earlier, Toronto got a subway. Not the largest in the world, 4.6 miles to be exact, and as Torontonian pointed out to anyone who was interesting, to anyone at all in fact, it was Canada's first. With it came a new bird, the sturdy-hearted, long-standing strap -hanger. So what does it look like? What is the ride on it like? Well, say you're taking a short trip from Wellesley to Brewer. You buy your token, free for a quarter, from a machine that looks as if it might descend gum under different conditions. The stations are walled with glass tile in three restful colors. Pearl gray, English eggshell, that's green, and the color the TPC calls primrose, so that's yellow. And naturally, there are friendly ads to help you pass the time if you're waiting for a train. 
but you may not have time to read them because the trains come so fast, about two and a half minutes apart. The PDC cars pick up passengers at the rate of 20,000 an hour and sweep up litter on the tracks as well. As you see, a truly useful and unusual convention. If you want to get lost, or not get lost, handy guys show you the way. No smoking inside, but the trip is so short the chances are you don't want to smoke. Opening day, they made the whole distance in 12 minutes. And the shiny planes can move at the rate of 50 miles an hour. Arrived at Gloor Street Station almost before you had time to say Toronto Transportation Commission. A transfer will take you anywhere, or almost anywhere, once again untouched by human hands. And so you're above ground again, your trip through the bowels of Toronto over. And you can take a streetcar. Yes, they're still running. The subway only runs 4.6 miles up Young Street. So you see, the skyline of Toronto has changed. And so have the people. Toronto got itself a subway. Really? <laughs>